Hello, welcome back everybody. I got a new microphone. Sounds good, right? I hope. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> so levels look okay though, so it's gotta be decent. Uh, well, welcome back everybody. I'm super excited to get back into today's video. Not back, but in for the first time. Back because I've been researching it all day. So you've already saw the title. We are comparing the Lightning and the Rivian. Now they're really close yet different. So originally I was gonna stack up basically every electric truck that might be available within the next couple years or so. And then I decided, well, let's make this really actionable and let's look into cars that like you, truck, sorry, that you can buy within like the year or so. Cause I technically you could go out, make a reservation and really purchase it when it's ready to be built. Like we've seen Rivian's already starting to do deliveries. The Lightning hasn't hit any production snags quite yet, at least not publicly. So it seems like, yes, there's a huge demand for both. So the backlog is huge, but you could go realistically tomorrow and start a purchase of either of these two trucks. And the pricing is really close when you look at like the main features that you want in an electric truck. So that's why I think it's really important to really dissect these two. So here's, I'm gonna break this video into two sections. A lot of this will be like in very educated opinion and then some are just cold hard, cold hard facts. So we're gonna do the cold hard facts section in a nice little chart I made. We're gonna do that part first and then just get all of that out of the way. It includes price, range, all the core things you look for in a vehicle and then we're going to get into more uh, pros and cons of going with either uh, the Rivian or the Ford Lightning and then some of the trade-offs you get as well as just like the nitty-gritty will be towards the end so it'll get more in the weeds as we go on as and also more uh, theoretical than analytical hopefully that makes sense it, it makes sense to me at least so let's let's look at this chart right here and get started Okay, I know I'm not the best graphic design artist. However, hopefully, hopefully this is at least enough for, it's pretty, pretty easy to read, I'd say. So here's what I'm breaking down this review into. We're looking at the Lariat base with the tech package. So that's a $2,000, 2000 something tech package added on. And now I think it's fair that we have that uh, included in our price and stacked up because without it, it really doesn't even come close to the Rivian because you lose the phone is key. You lose a lot of the cool features that happen to be part of the uh, entire like ecosystem that most electric vehicles should have. So getting a lightning without this is almost, you know, totally pointless. Pointless is not the right word, of course, but in my mind, when you think electric vehicle, the tech package should be included as all. And now before I dive in, actually, I do want to say, if you're looking at the pro and you don't need the tech, this video is not for you. Get the pro. You can't get a value better than that. An electric vehicle for 40 K that has decent amount of tech and like looks pretty cool and is very functional. That's perfect get that. However, when it comes to the people in this price range of like 67,000 to 80,000 topping out, this video is for you. If you are willing to put that in and you really want these tech features along with the functionality features, that's what we're getting into today. Because other than that, the Rivian's just not even in the consideration. And it's just, hey, get an affordable Lightning and be happy with it because it, it checks the boxes for you personally. All right, back to the graphic. Now, again, we're doing the base Lariat with the tech package. That comes in at $71,289. Up next is actually technically a downgrade. However, this is the XLT with the extended battery. I wanted to throw this in uh, despite me saying that I think it needs to have tech to be in this stack up. The price fits. And if you want a afford like affordable in quotes, lightning that has an extended range this is all you can get so i wanted to include this just so we can stack up and see what you're getting for that seventy four thousand compared to even the lariat trims and or the rivian so that's next on the list is the xlt with the extended battery and that upgraded package so also we have lariat extended range because that is honestly the best <laughs> deal that all around Kind of, you know, when you look at the lightning, it just checks. It has absolutely everything. The moonroof, you you name it. It's totally stacked. So um, moving right along. Oh, yeah. And sorry, another 
dropping out to another disclaimer here is I'm excluding the most expensive Rivian and the most expensive Platinum uh, because I think they're kind of outside this conversation. It adds 10 or 20K and it's not within that little window I like. I mean, if you're stacking those up, it's really close. And honestly, I, I, it would be a hard decision to make. I'd probably go Rivian, but that that's to address you people who have the way big budget, even bigger than this big budget. So, okay, moving along. The Rivian Explore package. Now, this is the base Rivian, like the cheapest one you could get. And that starts at $67,500. And then finally, we're going to do the base Rivian, but with the extended battery. Because I think that uh, in price as well as features stacks up the most to these XLT and Lariat trims. Now, of course, there's the Adventure package for the Rivian as well. And that includes a bunch of other stuff that are more really like... Um, it's more of a difference in my opinion from like the Lariat to the Platinum than it is anything else. So I think if we stay in this explore trim level, it, it makes a lot of sense for this comparison. You, you can argue that if you want, but that's where I'm going with this video. Okay. So let's talk first thing, probably most important thing for a lot of people is range. Now you see right away that the best deal on here is gotta be the Rivian. Because when you look at the range versus price, if that's your main concern, the range and price, you can't beat that. 312 EPA estimated mileage, under 70K, that's a steal. That's pretty great. Now, the next closest thing to that is that XLT extended range and in price. And that's technically less mileage, but and technically less features. So it really points to the Rivian as a, a pretty much a home run if you're in this budget. And and another important thing for this whole comparison is remembering that the base Rivian battery is more than the extended range lightning battery estimated. You know, again, we still don't know the the nitty gritty of the lightning battery because it hasn't been thoroughly tested yet. You know, in comparison to Ford's marketing right now, technically the Rivian's beating it. Okay, so I'm just going to read through the mileages here. And then remember the Lariat tech package without the extended range is coming in at the lowest mileage with 230 miles on a charge. And then both the XLT extended and Lariat extended are going to get 300. Then we have the Rivian, like I said, coming in at 312. And then on Rivian's website, they don't say exactly how much the extended battery is, but it is 400 plus in their estimate. So my guess is it's not a ton higher or they would just say that. But 400 plus range is it's the dream. That's I personally, I, I think the four or 500 range, once every EV can hit that, it's really going to open up buyers to like not feel intimidated when buying an electric vehicle. So, so good for Rivian on that. All right. So this next feature might not be super important to you, but it's one of the more, number one things I look for in an electric vehicle. Ever since uh, my phone became my key, I don't know how I'd live without it because it's so great not having to keep so many things, uh, keeping track of so many things. I don't have keys, wallet, and a phone. Hell, if my I have my wallet set up on my phone, I could literally just leave with my phone. That's the life. <laughs> That's great. So anyway, phone is key. It, I, I made sure to include it in all these comparisons. So the only one it won't be included in is the XLT. On that note, every single trim we're looking at here includes all the advanced safety features, all the advanced cruise control tech features that you'd expect in this price vehicle. If you want to know like the exact safety features and like the lane keep assist and all that. Basically every single vehicle has that on this list, which is a great thing. Now the only one missing like that advanced driving, like Ford's blue cruise, for example, is the XLT. And honestly, it's still only available on limited roads. It's not something I would make sure to include in your package. It's a nice to have thing, but far from a necessity at this point. Okay, so moving right along, now that we talked about tech and the phone is key, a moonroof to me is such like a superficial thing to be interested in, but it's something I really care about. I think it's, I, I love being at a red light and just staring at the moon on a sunny day, <laughs> staring at the moon on a sunny, staring at the clouds, whatever. I like moonroofs, sue me. Um, so you're not going to get a moonroof on the Lariat base or the XLT. However, all of the other ones in this 
uh, grouping will, of course, have either a moonroof. So the, the difference here is Ford's actually opens, whereas I believe the Rivian is more like a Tesla Model Y style where it's just a glass view of the world, not necessarily letting air in. So personally, I, I, I would never open a moonroof. I just like the view and letting more light into the car. Um, but to each their own. Next, if we're talking trucks, you got to be talking payload and towing. And there's interesting numbers here. So first, the base Lariat. Now, it really depends on the extended battery versus non-extended battery to get these numbers. So that's why the Lariat base is less than the other two Lightnings here. Um, so we have 7,700 for towing then the both of the other extended battery lightnings can do up to 10,000 whereas Rivian states with both batteries you can tow up to 11,000 and that's pretty fantastic you can't complain there so then we have payload uh something interesting here is that the lariat base without the extended battery frees up more weight in the vehicle therefore you can have 2,000 pounds of payload whereas literally everyone here at safe to estimate is just 1800 so if payload's important to you, it's cool to know that the Rivian can stack up because a really big part of this entire comparison is remembering that the Rivian is definitely more targeted for like, you know, hip millennial rock climbers than it is like your average Joe construction workers. Not to say both can't own either of these vehicles. It's just like when you look at their marketing, it's pretty obvious who they think is going to be buying each vehicle. Whereas like a successful contractor who's ready to go electric is probably going to steer more toward the lightning. Whereas, you know, a younger, more adventurous person who needs a truck to go rock crawling is probably going to steer towards the Rivian. And of course there's crossover, but that's just roughly where you see the marketing going. So the final thing we got to talk about is the need the need for speed. And what we have here is the lightnings hitting that 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds and Rivian with extremely impressive 0 to 60 of 3 seconds. Guys, that is fast. <laughs> this thing is sick. The Rivian more and more is becoming a home run idea for people in this price range. So if you are not getting a base XLT and lower, I would immediately start considering this Rivian. Okay, so let's talk looks real quick. Um, I kind of already touched on the Rivian versus Lightning being like Rivian is obviously trying to capture a younger generation, whereas the Lightning is probably going a little bit older. And it shows with the design and the inside of the Lightning also looks like the current F-150s. They didn't take any crazy swings. They kept it core they kept it free they kept it american and that was a good move on their part because i think most of their target audience wants that i was i was even drawn to it. i thought it looked great i love that what they did with it now the rivian has this very sleek very high-tech looking interior with a huge just crazy looking front that is very polarizing every other person i talk to hates it or loves it so i'm right in between i actually kind of really like it if i'm being honest but at the same time it, it's just so out there that i totally get if you don't like it so that's something to consider so for charging on the road they both use the same connection they both have similar charge times that's not a differentiator the actual charger uh, they both use the same network uh, they'll i mean it's really not worth diving into because you could use the charge point electrify america blink all of those will work with either of these so, so if tech is important Again, at this price range, you are getting a lot in your Ford. So that's not a ton to worry about. However, the Rivian is going to probably get more cool things over time. It has more fun quirks to it. If you've seen like thorough reviews, it has like the sentry mode, like just like the Tesla does. It has more tech straight up. There's no arguing it. Also, like honestly, little things like the Rivian has air suspension, which is like kicking ass on like rock crawlers and like mountain like trails and like doing some badass stuff with your truck. The Rivian is really impressive. Now tack another two grand on these prices. You see if that is a thing you want to do with the Rivian, probably the lightning can handle it too. They have a pretty impressive new, you know, uh, suspension design, but I think the Rivian would out, 
outdo the Lightning slightly if that's what you want to do with this vehicle. So there's another thing to consider. Another thing that comes stock on the Rivian that's kind of cool is that gear tunnel. It's just like a little cork that makes it fun. I love that you have that extra storage there. In addition to that, they have a compressor built into every vehicle, even at the base trim. So let's say you get a flat while you're out rock crawling and you have a spare tire, or you just need to put in more air or let air out if you're stuck in the mud, you have a compressor to you know let air out and then put air back in after. I don't know why every car doesn't have that already. I love that. Another super important thing for a lot of people, especially right now, is the purchase experience. There's a pro on the Lightning because they have, Ford has like this infrastructure, right? You know that you once you put place your order, they're going to have like strict tracking and you'll be able to see it and you'll have like all eyes on it. You'll get your vehicle because it's Ford. Whereas Rivian is still very new and it is direct to consumer. So you could be waiting in the dark for a long time. You have no one to reach out to really. They're a small team. On the flip side, that might be a pro for the Rivian. You don't have to deal with dealers. So honestly, I see it as a toss-up on that point. So if you're like familiar with working with dealers and you prefer that, then that's another reason to go forward. However, if you are more of a pro-future type guy and you are all about direct-to-consumer and you can handle that and you don't mind being a little bit in the dark and you're very patient... Rivian's not a bad idea. Neither of these trucks have like proven themselves out in the world because the Lightning's brand new and the Rivian's brand new. So either or, I think you're going to have a certain amount of risk. Like, so keep that in mind when you're purchasing these. Like, we don't know. There could be recalls down the road. They're brand new, but that should be obvious with any new vehicle. So just another small thing to consider. But hey, I think I've been talking for 22 minutes now. No, I know because I can see the timer here and I don't want to get too in the weeds. I hope I hit all the points that you were looking for. If I forgot something, please let me know in the comments and I, I'll, I'll answer right away and we can talk about it, especially if you have questions. Uh, but I really like to dive into this and it kind of talked me out of a lightning again. So I, I, I'm really in the ether trying to find what my next vehicle will be. Right now I have a Model Y and I like it a lot. But I'm going to be honest, I'm, I, I do want an electric truck still. So I was all set for the Lightning, but it stacks up so close to the Rivian, especially if you want that tech and all those like cool features. It almost makes a lot more sense to go with the Rivian. So if you were like dead set on a Lariat and you were on the fence, definitely at least look into the Rivian because what I'm finding is it kind of outweighs it. And and like, just again, to sum this whole video up, tech focused, fun, electric, you're going Rivian, practical, getting the work done, job site guy, <laughs> you got to go for it. And, and I wish I could sum it up in an easier way. And that's just keep that. I just keep landing on. Those are like the, the main differential. If you're like XLT, mid XLT and lower, and you're a work truck guy, you got to go lightning. It makes total sense. If you're considering the any of the extended batteries or the low lariat, you got to at least compare it to the Rivian because they stack up neck to neck the whole way, if not Rivian beating it out in almost every single category other than like work capabilities. But at the same time, it's like the Rivian can handle it too. So that's that i've rambled on at this point and i hopefully you guys are still with me and i thank you guys that are bye that's the end of the video <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you bye